Hello everybody. We're going to be doing service today on the RK24 we have. This will be the 50 hour service. Uh, we got this tractor last fall and it's it's been a bit of a workhorse around here. Um, so far very impressed with its capabilities for being just a subcompact tractor. I tried to do a video yesterday showing uh, the procedures for the 50 hour service and somehow that got deleted. So we're gonna try again. Um, and I'm just gonna go through all the steps that we took yesterday uh, in it and let you know how easy some steps are and how much of a pain in the neck other steps are. Now, as you can see here, we've got the front of the tractor up on jack stand, so it's good and secure. I'll use the outriggers on the backhoe to lift up the rear end enough to put jack stands directly underneath the uh, frame of the backhoe itself so that they're out of the way from where we need to be working at. Now on this side, I went ahead and removed the tire, the rear tire, because your drain for your hydraulic tank is right here. It takes a 19 millimeter socket. There's actually one on each side, so you need to drain both sides. So we'll go ahead and do that and then proceed on to where the filter is, which is right here. And this will unscrew and pull out a nice screen filter that you need to clean during this process as well. Now one thing to uh, keep in mind, there's a lot of hydraulic oil in this thing. A standard drip pan may not be big enough to hold the volume that is needed. So you wanna keep that in mind before you crack this thing open and then find out, whoa, this pan's not gonna hold enough. And then you get a extreme mess on your hands. So this tractor holds uh, a little bit over four and a half gallons of hydraulic oil. So make sure you've at least got a five gallon uh, oil collection pan. And I also went ahead and zip tied a piece of rubber on the end here where the wheel hub is so that if it comes out a little too forcefully it's not going to overshoot this drip pan and when everything will end up right where it needs to be so i'll go ahead and get that drained and we'll be right back and we've got that draining real nice now it's going to take a few minutes to empty it all the way out and you want to make sure that that's good and empty before you go and pull the uh, filter uh, just so you don't have an enormous amount of fluid pulling out of that area as well. So once this is good and drained, we'll start undoing the screen filter there and pull that out. You want to keep in mind that any bolts that you pull off uh, in the hydraulic system, they're going to have a rubber washer on them. So most of them stay in place. But always double check to make sure that that's in place before you put them back on. Okay, we've got the drain plug back in nice and tight. We're going to move on here to the filter cover. Uh, this takes a 7 8 wrench and a little bit of force to break loose. But once it, once it breaks loose, um, you can take it apart fairly easily with just your fingers. We got a little bit more hydraulic oil coming out. And then this whole thing will slide out. And you can see that mesh filter inside. Now you'll want to take this and clean it uh, for any particulate that's on it, uh, use a little diesel fuel, clean it up real good, get everything loose, and then blow it off with a air compressor, 
and it'll make it look like new again slide it right back in and this is almost done draining out one thing just like with all the drain plugs uh, you need to keep an eye out for especially on this one because it seems to fit on here a little bit looser than the others is that rubber washer and make sure that that is back on there before you install the filter again and once this is finished up draining we'll go ahead and put this back in and tighten her down real good and wipe away okay and we're back if you notice this is now a different color and what had happened is after reinstalling that sump filter back in there I was able to tighten it all the way by my fingers and put the wrench on there to give it a little bit more of a a uh, little bit more torque and it snapped it right in half so luckily this piece here had broken off and the filter itself was still in there and luckily I was able to get it unthreaded and pulled out all the pieces by hand and had to make a trip over to the local Rural King and pick up a new one by the way if you do make this mistake and and break that um, and have to get a replacement it's a fifty dollar filter um, just a little heads up be very careful with it we've wiped everything good and clean around here uh, got all the oils off and we will pump the hydraulic fluid back in the reservoir last. Uh, we're going to go over and I will show you um, the process for the everything that was done underneath yesterday with in regards to the filter for the hydraulics itself um, as well as the oil filter and the front end um, lubrication there now and being back underneath the tractor here you can see tucked away on the front side of the rear transaxle there is your hydraulic filter itself um, when you change those out it's a good thing to go ahead and mark the hours at which the service was performed and the date that way you know for future reference there's never a question you can do that with a paint marker and it'll stay on there pretty good if you notice this particular filter is a real pain to get to um, there's no real direct route to get in there we ended up um, once all the hydraulic fluid was drained and got under here to get at it, we actually had to undo this hydraulic hose here and pull that out of the way. And then also there's a nut here on this cable and then loosen that, this slides up. And there's actually quite a bit of slack in this cable that tucks up next to the filter. But with these two things out of the way, you can actually drop that filter down and change it. The only other issue, though, is it is very tight quarters inside here. I don't know if you can tell. You can barely get your hand in there to get it to move. Um, the original filters were on there very tight and I was able to get a strap wrench in uh, barely and it took a while to get it to where I was able to unscrew it with my hand um, because with 
no room to work with that strap wrench could only turn it about an eighth of an inch each time so when you go to do this service um, be prepared to spend a decent amount of time on this particular filter if we look up here towards the front you'll see the front axle the fluid in here is also part of the 50 hour service change so if we look here there's a drain plug here box end uh, it was easiest to come off with just an adjustable crescent wrench I have one here that actually has a vice grip locking mechanism on it which makes it nice to where it won't slide off when you put, start putting some torque on it but that worked really well there's also on each of the axles down by the tire itself there's a drain screw here as well as one on this side here and if you look up top on each side here is the filler screw for this side as well as one over here and then your main chamber here in the axle is filled at this cap here there's a dipstick in this cap it's just a little plastic cap um, but it's a nice wide opening that makes it easy I think you're in it for four quarts total on the front end gear oil and we're back out here you also on the 50 hour service and generally just touch them up you know about every eight hours of use is a good practice to keep them good and greased but go around all of your zerk fittings here i just put a couple pumps of grease in them they're all over the place. Anywhere something moves, look for a Zerk fitting. They're on both sides of the loader, as well as back here on the loader itself, on the backhoe part. Um, you've got little Zerk fittings all over. So you want to make sure that these are good and greased on this 50-hour service. And then the last thing that we ended up doing is underneath the engine cover here. Now if you look, this hood props up nice and out of the way, but everything else is really cram-packed down in here. So on this front plastic grill with your headlights, there are two screws here and here, just little thumb screws. And they unscrew, and this whole piece slides out of the way. So once these little thumb screws are taken out, and you go down here, there's a little wire clip that hooks to your headlights. Once that's undone, this entire piece. lift up and move right out of the way and your battery connections are down here you can make sure that they're good and tight not corroded or anything these side panels they're metal side panels if we look in here you'll see a little just these little clips okay that's all that's holding these things on and it's like this on both sides so when you need to get in here if you just pop those loose and then back here are some sliding pins that will just slide it out of the way. And out she goes, just like that. Now you've got a really unrestricted way to access everything that you need to. You can undo the air filter here. Just two clips, pops it out, blow some compressed air on it, clean.
clean it up a little bit. It doesn't say to do that as part of the 50 hour service, but it's a good practice to keep. As well as your front grill screen here. Blow off any gunk that's in there. I've got a little bit, some grass clippings stuck in there. So you just take a little compressed air and blow that out. It keeps everything breathing like it should. If we come down here, you'll see here's where the oil filter is here. And it was marked for 50 hours, yesterday's date. This one is actually very easy to get to. Uh, it was a little tight on there uh, with trying to get it off, but the access is very good. You get your oil fill check here, and then your place here for filling the oil. So with all that being done yesterday, um, that was very easy to accomplish. Oil drain is directly underneath, very easy to access. Um, and as far as the changing of the oil in the front end axle was actually quite simple and didn't take a lot of time. Uh, the only problems that we've ran into was on the hydrostatic part with the filter being located the way that it was as well as that sump screen breaking apart um, with reinstalling it. But everything else was not too bad at all to service. Now with everything back together, you can see it's all screwed back together. On tight. You can see that there is still plenty of room to access the air filter whenever you need to without taking off the side panels, as well as this front screen. You can pop that up and just slide this up whenever you need to to blow that out. And it all just snaps back into place real easy. Doesn't take but a couple minutes. Now on the back of the tractor, you'll see a little cap like this. A little rubber cap with a breather hole on it. And that's for where your hydraulic oil is added. Now, this thing takes four and a half gallons of hydraulic oil. So it is nice, it's not required, but it makes it awful simple to have a little hose hooked to a pump that can hook right to your bucket of transhydraulic fluid. So then when you just sit here and get it pumping, as you can see it just starts going right on through. Makes life a lot easier with trying to put that much fluid into something. Okay, here we are back underneath the tractor. And what you're looking at here is a glass window that shows the level of the hydraulic fluid. Now as I'm pumping it, you see it's raising up. You want to get down here and check when you get close to about four, four and a half gallons and keep an eye on it. That way you've got that fluid in the window and we're going to stop right about there. And what I'm going to do is start up the tractor and cycle all the hydraulics, the front loaders, the backhoe, my outriggers, move all the hydraulics up and down, extend them back and forth all the way and that'll move all that fluid into where it needs to be. Then we'll come back here and check this sight glass again. And if we need to add a little more, that's the appropriate time to go ahead and do it and make sure that it's topped off. Now that the tractor's running, I'll go ahead and throttle it up just a little bit.
Looking back under here, the oil level had dropped just a little bit. So we'll go ahead and pump it just a little bit more till we're at halfway and call it good for there. Okay. Alright, now that we have the hydraulic reservoir refilled, we cleaned up a little bit, put that cap back on, put that cap there, got that on nice and tight, and we're ready to get this thing down off the jacks and back in the barn. So I hope everybody enjoyed this video, learned a little something. It is in my capabilities of doing this type of service to the tractor with as much of a pain as it was, especially on the hydraulic system side, getting to that filter and the other one being the way that it was. I would almost recommend getting it done just to save yourself the headache and recommend getting it done at the Rural King store itself. But if you've got the time and the know-how and the tools, it's definitely something that can be tackled. It just may take you a little bit longer than anticipated. So I hope this was a helpful video, and we'll see you on the next one.